Good morning. Good morning. What are we doing? We're going to turn on the number three ESS today. Uh, the first thing you, we have to do is we have to insert the fuses because we don't currently have a cutoff switch for it. These are, there's about 20 of them. Each one provides 48 volts to a different frame or part of a frame. And the way I remember which one is which, or which ones are necessary is the frame, the fuses we're using also have an indicator next to them. And that is all of them. We don't put in the indicators because of reasons. The next thing we have to do is we have to turn on the power converters. These are in the power frame. There is one, two, eight of them. And then clear the alarms when possible by pushing these little switches up. The, these ones don't go out of alarm until the machine comes on. They need to be reset by the processor. The next thing we do is we turn on the peripheral control frame. There is two keys that need to be operated. Off key, on key, and two on. And we want to then operate a lamp test on that. That's good. Should have done this earlier. We need to turn on the, the, the teletype. Uh, the tape drives. The teletype controllers which in a modern computer we would call a serial port. What's that key? This key is the um, reset the alarm. Uh, we've got an alarm condition in this frame right now for reasons that I'm not super clear on. Ah, one thing that remains is the control panel. First we turn on the lamps, then we turn on the circuit that controls the lamps. Right, so I log into the teletype. Minicom doesn't quite come up clean yet, because reasons. Uh, and then we turn on the two processors. And they will start booting. This process takes about 10 minutes. Now I realize they're booting, but you said there was some magic init you had to do over here on the system status panel. There's like memory reload. That doesn't come until later. Uh, once the machine, once the CPU winds up in what looks like a boot loop, then we need to uh, reset it and tell it to boot cleanly. And so it's, it's currently loading memory into the, from the tape into its uh, DRAM. And then after we, we let it do this for a while and then we say, we, we re reset it and tell it to reload, and then it will usually come up cleanly. So we're not completely sure why it's stuck in this loop, but I think now I can reinitialize re it. Uh, enable, memory reload, execute, and that forces it to reboot. So one thing we're looking for is um, once it lands in a successful phase, uh, the, we will get a, another counting in binary indication on these lamps, um, but it will be much slower. So instead of being a blur up until like bit nine or 10, it'll be a blur just in the low two positions. Um, and that's called a slow count. And that only persists usually for less than a minute, uh, at which point it, it lights four lamps to indicate the four operations that it's performing, um, and then it will come up.
and the screen flashes because you have visual bell turned on. Right, so if we had a physical teletype, it would be ringing a bell continuously. Um, that's every time it loads four blocks off of tape. That's a fast count, that's a fast count. The documentation calls this a bouncing ball pattern. I call it Cylons. It's not exactly Cylons, I know. The first indication we have that we have a successful boot is the machine will release a couple of relays under program control. Haven't heard that yet. That's slow count. And now we're processing calls. However, we're not done. Now the machine has woken up. It is printing a list of its complaints to the, to the teletype. It has a lot of complaints every time. Uh, we have to then reinitialize it not, not the same kind of initialized. We need to uh, bring the second processor up into a serviceable state, uh, reload its memory, and then inform it that all of its hardware does actually work because it comes up in a state where everything is broken, it thinks. Okay, so we're up. Now I'm going to set the clock so it doesn't immediately uh, Three twenty-two, twenty-two. What are the underscores? Underscore is uh, backspace. This machine does not have a backspace, so we have to type an underscore and count them. Now it's going to print out some more complaints. The purpose of setting the clock uh, is that. If you don't, it prints out its hourly report within three minutes of being turned on. And the hourly report is an entire screen full of text and takes forever. So does setting the clock make that not happen within three minutes? Yeah, it makes it happen at the top of the hour. Oh, right. Okay, so it gives you, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, we have most, it's, it's seven minutes after the hour, so we have a, a while until the next one com comes along. Now it's printing out a register dump. Uh, because as process as part of the process of booting it crashes itself mm -hmm. uh, bell labs was doing uh, crash only software decades before the rest of the industry um so now it's printed its register dump from that uh process crash mm -hmm. um, and now i'm going to clear these error indications mm -hmm. and these as well so uh these are the easiest ones these, these three. So the second processor is out of service, and that's also marked as an alarm state. Um, the network controller, the scanner controller, and the peripheral pulse distributor. So that's the relay driver. That's the sensor that it uses to detect circuit states. And that is, uh, the network controller is for operating the, um, operating the network. So, Wait, that is not what I want. So now I'm saying unconditionally restore your peripheral control frame so that will um, clear all these lamps. There we go. Now I need to update the memory in the offline processor. So update offline main store, unconditional. That will overwrite everything over there with all the information from over here. 
just takes a moment. Uh, so in the meantime, I'm going to re release this alarm. And then I will go and clear the minor power alarm, which is on the other side of the machine again. And that is these, these 230 volt converters uh, have come up in an unclean state. And that should have cleared the alarm. It's also going to print out a bunch of complaints on the way. It does not seem to have cleared the alarm. Hmm. I'm going to bring this CPU back into service. Ah, it's being annoying today. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna run diagnostics. Uh, another thing that's problematic is that this machine has come up, it always comes up in a state where it doesn't really understand where its tapes are. Uh, so we have to power cycle the tapes and then retention them, which will cause it to seek to the far end and then back to the beginning of the tape so then it knows that the tape is a tape. I power cycled both of them. Now it's going to print out an error message. Unconditionally restore tape O. And one. Retention, please. I'm not sure why we're getting an interrupt five remove, uh, but what's going on is the that's a, it's a flood of spurious interrupts coming from the, the hardware. Uh, this is an intermittent condition. It happens some days, but not every day. We've chased it a couple of times and tend to wind up taking a circuit diagram off the edge of the page. While the tapes are moving, you can see there's lamps on them. The green light means that the simulated tape is moving. This one is moving, this one is moving as well. And when both those green lights go out, that is when our tapes will be done initializing and we can run CPU diagnostics. Which, let's, let's take a video of that, because that's fun too. Okay, tapes are gone. Um, Diagnose the CU. It's going to take a moment to load, and you should film that CPU. Oh, yeah. It should pass all of his tests. It's just I don't want to run that again and wait for it. So now the reason it's taking a while is because it had to update the memory, which it overwrote some of it for the purpose of performing diagnostic tests. And that updated the main store successfully and then restored successfully, and you can see no. There's no um, interrupt five issues, and we've got two green lights here. So two green lights, one for each system controller. Uh, system controller consists of a processor, a network controller, a scanner, and a PPD. Um, so those 
have both come up nicely. We still got a minor power and major power alarm. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with that, but the next step is going to swap the CUs. So, um, because this one has some issues with call processing because of its peripheral hardware. So I'm gonna put the hats over this one as well so you can see that it's in. So if you back up a little bit and get a shot of both of those, and it's, it swaps instantly. Now, I think we should be ready to actually process calls rather than just pretend. Yeah, it, it made a phone call. Yeah.